Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video here on my YouTube channel. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how you can survive to end game more often in your solo cash cups. And it's important that we make this distinction right here because duo cash cups are a different tournament. They're a different game mode altogether. They're going to require a different strategy. Um, and solo cash cups just have a different vibe, right? It requires a lot more patience, a discipline, and really, you know, avoid tilt. <laughs> like that helps the most but in general i want to give you guys some concrete tips to to help boost your percentage chance that you get to end game okay so the first thing that we have to talk about if we talk about this in a chronological order is the fact that you have you need to have goals off spawn right right away we have to talk about that so what are your goals off spawn goals of off spawn cool all right i can't type right now but either way there's three main goals that i want to talk about this first one is getting guns plus heals second one is getting max mats and the third one is securing mobility okay now, this is really all there is to it. Notice how I didn't write fight the person off spawn. Okay, so if you land in a POI, that sort of justifies splitting the loot with the other player. If the other player is not aggressive towards you, you don't have to be aggressive towards them as long as you can satisfy all three rules here. Okay, so I can show you examples after, but it's something that's really important to understand. Really, really important. Not really, really important to understand. Like, I can't emphasize this enough. A lot of people go to off spawn and then they die because they just feel like they have to fight the other person. But you have to understand that kill is one point. It's not a lot. Right? There's 30 placement points waiting for you if you're just patient for 15 minutes. That's all you have to do, right? And I feel like a lot of you guys are actually exceptional at endgame, but you just refuse to get to endgame, which is why I'm making this video in the first place. I feel like you need to just get to endgame, and I feel like a lot of you guys would survive a decent amount and get a bunch of top fives because you are mechanical, you know how to tunnel, you know how to do the basic stuff with rotates. I, I feel like that's not the issue, right? The problem when I coach a lot of people is that they just don't get to endgame that often. And I feel like that's the issue that we need to talk about. So let's expand on this a little bit more, right? Three goals is pretty simplified, but let's expand this a little bit, a little bit more, okay? So one thing is that ideal loadout is SMG pump and two uh, heals. Like it could be any heals right here. It could be minis, bigs, right? Minis, bigs, uh, chugs, doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, but it's also important to understand your fifth slot, because this is actually four slots right here. Uh, your fifth slot should just be Spider-Man. There's only two cash cups left, and I really, really hope you guys take it really seriously. Um, the Spider-Man is a very important item. It's a, it's a meta item, so don't make the mistake of messing up on the Spider-Man. I really, really, really said to, like, like change your drop spot, guys. It's fine, right? Learn about the new drop spot. But um, I really told you guys since the beginning of the season that Spider-Man is an OP item in solos, and it is. It is really important. Right. It's like it's not that I don't believe you can do well without it. It's just you're playing a whole different game compared to everyone else. You're not playing the same game. You're playing a very, very hard game compared to everyone else. Right. So make it easy for yourself and then perform. And that's what I would suggest. But in general, a uh, small detail to add is for surge games, you should run uh, MK7 plus SMG, no shotgun. Right. And the reason you do this, by the way, is that MK7 is a different ammo type than SMG. So if you are on a scuffed area where like you don't have a big POI to yourself, which oftentimes in solos you won't because there's 100 teams on the map, so you kind of have to split less loot. Uh, you just pick up MK7 and SMG, you'll just have double the ammo because they're different ammo types. Whereas if you're holding MK7 pump or SMG pump, you're only having you know medium ammo or light ammo and you're not using both which is basically cuts your ammo in half which is really hard to get surge then right so cool you just ditch your shotgun completely and if you have spider-man you don't actually care about shotgun until the very end right and in surge game people will die to surge often around you and if you have spider-man it acts as a harpoon you can harpoon a shotgun later in the game in fourth and fifth circle anyways so who cares right next thing is getting max mats the biggest thing that's neglected is actually metal um people need to fix this okay actually get metal really really important Securing mobility. What do I mean by this? Um, Spider-Man is the obvious one. I've said it already. I have to say it again because it's that important. Next thing is the car. This is not as obvious, right? Really important. You, you need a car, guys. Especially with the strategy that I'm about to lay out right here. You need a car. And I really hope you guys um, understand, like, it doesn't have to be a car in your off-spawn. And you can sort of loot off-spawn, satisfy the first two rules, and, you know, get Spider-Man, and then get a car that you've planned further on in the map, like, on your loot route. Right? And maybe you're done looting, all you need is a car. You just need to walk over to a different POI, pick up a car, and you're fine. Just understand where the cars are in your vicinity so you can go pick one up later. Does that make sense? Okay, now the last thing is uh, launch pads, but the problem is this is not actually that reliable because this is purely luck, right? So it cannot be planned for. It's based off of luck. Yes, you can improve your luck based on, you know, just looting more, but looting more is a risk. Like, if you have all of this, you're fine. Okay, so just understand, like, launch pads come and go, just can't be planned for. So I just removed this. This is all you need. Right. If you get a launch pad, think of it as like a, a bonus. It's not something that you necessarily need. You can steal launch pad, but in, in general, if you have Spider-Man, you don't necessarily need a launch pad in the first place. Um, you already have mobility. Cool. Think about it. Spider-Man is like end game and, and car is like your mid, mid to early game.
rotates, right? Because car can go bigger distances and stuff, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Let's get on to the next section. You might have heard in the video before um, from yesterday, the one hour video with Malabuka. Um, what we did in that specific video, like around the middle of the video, I talked about this. Let me type it out and I'll sort of uh, teach you guys after. Oh, cool, yeah. So I typed it out. Um, this is exactly what I wrote last time in the previous video. And this is what I tell all the people that I like coach. Like genuinely, this is the strategy. And I want you guys to understand this because this is actually a really good way and specifically unstacked games. Obviously, stack games with surge and stuff um, for non-surge games. Okay. Um, in surge games, it requires a slightly different strategy because you need to adjust based on surge. But if there's no surge in the game, you need to do this. Okay. And let me talk about why this is important. Focused on Mac conservation. Okay. That's why it's important. And that's what we're doing. Right. So understand this third center, it guarantees fourth. That's why we sort of play center in third. Um, if you guys don't know that, watch my previous video yesterday to understand why that happens. Uh, but in general, most of you guys will know this already because you play competitive. Like third center, if you go dead center, it guarantees fourth zone. You will guaranteed be in fourth zone when it does pull. Cool. So first edge, second edge. Why do we do this? Why is this so important? So the key thing is like, if you go center, you are very committed to a position and it's really hard to move around because there's other people around you. But if you go first edge, guess what? There's storm behind you. So there can't be anyone there. And it's really awkward for someone to be there and you know, less likely for someone to be there. So it's gonna be really important that you understand that like you're not as committed to a position, right? It's gonna be really, really dead back there. Like for example, if you combine this strategy with like dead side, and I really do recommend like lean dead side here. Okay, that's what you should be doing anyways right um you don't want to you don't have to do this so let me show an example actually uh, like this whole strategy will be really well done if i just show an example it's a fourth zone right here cool let's say i'm landing um where did epic pen go gotta get epic pen back let's grab that let's say i'm landing um like here for example I have a car as spider-man i have everything i need and i'm rotating okay where do i want to rotate to because i pick up a lambo from, from here and where do i want to rotate to and how do i want to rotate there because i can't just be like go here because that's not really telling you what you need to be doing. I'm, I need to go more in depth than that, right? How would I rotate? Because this part right here is important, right? Like, where do I want to go? That's what's important, okay? So let me give you a general rule of thumb when you have a car. A lot of people, this is counterintuitive, by the way, but it's actually really important. A lot of people like to go through cover because it's like, oh, I won't get shot if I have stuff around me, right? And I just go like this. Right? I like to go through POIs because it's natural cover and I, I feel like I don't get shot more often. I think that's wrong. I think you need to go through open areas, right? And this might blow your mind a little bit because like, oh my God, like why is he telling us to go through open areas? Isn't that more likely that there's bigger LOS on you? And when I say LOS, I mean line of sight. Like there's more people that can see you. There's more people that can shoot you because you're in the open. Why does that make sense? Well, it just makes sense because if you're in the open area, you get to see a lot in front of you, right? You get to see like one, two like kilometers in front of you, right? And it's really important to understand, like if you just go through a POI, there's a lot of people hiding behind corners because they hear your car coming from far away and then they set themselves up, right? So they set themselves up like behind the building right here. You're driving, 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 and then boom, like the distance between you and the enemy is minimal. They engage in a fight. You have no choice but to fight them. But in this specific case, if I like to say this is an enemy right here, I'm driving, driving, driving. Oh, I see the enemy. I don't want to go there. Cool. See, right? See the difference? If This is why I sort of don't recommend people to go through the trees here because there's lots of people that hide behind trees and catch your car off guard and then beam you for 100 and then take a fight. And like I said, we don't want to take mid game fights because it just doesn't go with our goal of surviving to end game. It's contradictory. We don't want to do that, right? So be in open areas. I would recommend a path like this with adjustments based on uh with adjustment based on what you see right and if you see people like if you see someone here right you wouldn't take this path anymore right once you see them here you switch it up right you'd go the other way you go like this right and why not go like this because like, we want to lean towards that side more often so let's just go left let's just keep saying to left be another person here oh let's go like this right see how i'm adjusting the path it's not like a guaranteed planned out path it's just like this is what i suggest you need to adjust it based on who you see so you avoid fights Right. And the benefit of going to open areas is that you get to see way more in front of you. Cool. So let's, let's talk more about this uh, concept right here and why it's really important to follow this map conservation. Right. Because it's not enough to get to end game. This is actually a bad title. How to survive to end game more often. A better title would be how to get to end game with really, really stacked loot so you can succeed. But that's a really long title and I don't want to do that. Right. So this is a very like generic or like very simple title that people can understand. But I, it's not just enough to survive. Like, am I going to succeed if I get to end game with 10 builds, no heals? No, I won't. I don't care how good I am, right? It's really hard to succeed. And it often requires you to do very risky things to fix that situation, like getting kills, right? So in general, if you want to set yourself up for end game and do well in the end game, which is actually what matters, you need to follow this rule and conserve all your mats. 
and your heals ideally but you want to conserve your mats you want to conserve your spider-man charges which is a way of con you know conserving mats in endgame and then you just need to follow that right and this is one way to do it let's talk about what mats would look like right right here you would be 555 right and then you would stay 555 because brick is everywhere you most likely make your two by one brick you know surrounding your car you want to keep the car by the way you surround your car with brick like usually a two by one you want to keep the car by the way and then you you refarm you farm your brick and then you have 555 again cool and the same thing here notice how it's very easy to refarm on hills on on you know areas where it's dead side it's really really easy to refarm because you're not congested and you're going to be leaning dead side so it's really easy to refarm Right, so you should still be 555, honestly. And it's really important that you are actually. And when I say 555, I don't mean like 443. I don't mean like 444 or like 334. I literally mean 555, like maxed out max. 500, 500, 500. Really important that you do that. The difference between two or three extra builds can be humongous towards the end of the game when you end up dying. Okay. Now, third center, you sh you're, you're going to boost, right? If you have a Lambo, you're going to boost. Ideally, you should go for a Lambo with tires. Uh, otherwise, try to get any other t car with tires. If you can't do that, get at least a truck, the pickup truck that can really uh, do well on terrain. Um, and then as soon as third center pulls, I'm talking like when it's 0, 0, 002 or 0, 0, 003, you start moving, right? You start moving already because you're not going to pull zone when you're on second edge. You want to go towards center, right? So let's say like second zone pulls here. I'm just going to start drawing the zone. Let's say second zone pulls here, right? And what's our rule for second zone? We want to play edge, like I said before. So we're going to box up on this hill right here and chill. And then third zone pulls here. And as soon as it pulls, I want to take the car and go. And I'm going to go right here. You see? And why do I want to go there? Because I can guaranteed pull forward zone and I'm chilling. And you, you wouldn't take this path. Maybe you go like around. And as I said before, you kind of want to judge based on what you see. So if I go like this, I'm an open area. I see someone here. I'm probably going to go around like this. I don't want to go like this probably because this is a ditch. This is very low ground right here. So let's just go around like this and then reach center. And I make so, make a metal box in center. I should have 142 builds because the box takes, you know, 140. A box takes eight builds. And then it's really, it's really easy. Really, really easy. Cool. Fourth zone pulse. I'm still at 142 builds. And then we have Spider-Man. It is 134. Look how many mats I have. I've saved Spider-Man all the way. I probably used three, four charges to get into half half. I now have six to seven charges of Spider-Man with 134 mats with a decent amount of heals. I've ditched the car in third zone and I'm chilling. Why can't you succeed now? That's up to you, right? This is a whole part of a, a different video because this video is purely focused on circles one to five and how to get to end game. Right, maybe i'll make a video on end game specifically but either way guys tell me how you guys like this video no gameplay all theory um trying to give you guys a, a sort of template or a game plan for what you should do in these solo cash groups upcoming um and it's really important you follow this like i said before i haven't said this enough uh genuinely play around spider-man it's one of the most broken items in solo cash cup history across fortnite like really important okay <laughs> try to try to get spider-man right make a solid plan around it and try to pick uh try to pick a spider-man pot and and do well with that okay cool Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys tomorrow.